with the ASU Rugby Draft live. We're looking at the uh, pertaining list of prospects. One name that sticks out to me in particular would be Emilio Benitez, the boy who grew up on a go farm kicking kumquats into a bucket. It's really been a struggle for him, but he made it this far. It's quite a beautiful story. Dylan, what would you say about it? I love the kid, especially since I walked into his room first day and saw the Texas flag hanging proudly in his room. It just uh, troubled me how it was upside down. I believe that's a Chilean flag. Anyways, another name that sticks out here, it's just screaming performance worldwide, would be Lawrence Rasmussen. Lawrence Rasmus, he brings a lot to the table on the field, but he's a character issue guy. He was three minutes late to accounting this morning, and don't doubt for a second that the coach has heard about that. That may affect his stock. Rubio Bull, this is a personal message to you. I expect better. In your personal opinion, who do you think is a, a good prospect? Well, I'll start with the freshmen I'm looking for, Nick Abreus. Of all the freshmen, the man, the man that the ladies love, always coming in, asking about Nick. Um... We'll see if he can provide on the field, but I'm definitely interested, as are many other people on campus, what he's capable of. I'm going to go with an old school kick, but with a new classic on it. Gavin Brown. Gavin Brown. He's been working the hamstrings left and right all summer. I don't know if you've noticed, but he seems to be bursting at the biceps. What are your takes on that? Gavin Brown came back. He got his full nine hours of sleep every day this summer, met his 5,000 calories, and it's obviously paying off. The bronze god is back and faster than ever. It really is a clash between bronze and beauty with that one, isn't it? Oh, wow, bronze and bronze. Just don't know where to begin. I'm looking here at the list again. Another name is just screaming at me. Mm -hmm. It's Dale Bates. It might be that tremendous rat tail or just his emu-like legs that just seem to capture the audience when he takes the field. No, what are you? No, normally it's just Dale Bates screaming at you. But, yeah, he is a guy that can bring electricity to the field. When you need a scorer, he's got it. That's true. Anyone else that in particular you'd like to mention? Let's keep it in the Bates family. Dustin. Dustin bringing it back. We have, we have the dredge trend going on. Connor Cook hitting 19, 20 rucks a game. And Dustin Bates, now with the dreads, looks to keep the high work rate up and hit just as many. We'll keep an eye out you on the field, Dusty. Let's hope for some work out there. Another name that seems to be just jumping out to me is Jonathan McColl. What are your takes on him, Dylan? The JV forward of the year. I know he's putting in work over summer. He really, really wants to upgrade that status. The KC Maniac. One look at that physique and he couldn't be doubted. You know, you know, we saw that flex at the CrossFit gym. You know, it opened a lot of eyes. We were unaware of the physical prowess before that photo came out. But new to, due to new technology, 2014, we know the traps are here to stay. Yeah, it's all, this is off the record. I heard that he once wooed a girl simply by flexing his left forearm. Left forearm? He's but normally a right calf guy. Talking about tremendous forearms, you can't let go of Kirk Pretorius. Or what can he let go of with those forearms? Not much. He looks to be eating maybe four, five babies a day. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think his daily cal intake might be? Daily calorie intake. Well, growing up in the rough, rough lands of Pretoria, South Africa, he could be eating anything. You know more about that. I do come from a bit of a more rougher part, as does Kirk. So we eat what we can get. Man's got to eat. Dog's got to eat. Oh. oh let you me know how. Let him hear you how. How do you think Donna Nino feels about this upcoming draft? Danny Breda believes he's put in his work, and rightfully so. He's came in ever since his freshman year, Danny A-side Breda. Quality throws, quality throws, and when he brings the energy, when he's passionate to a game, you see some hits being laid down. When he wants to bring the wood, he lays it down. Lays it, and it's there to stay. He is half of a lumberjack, half of a meatball, we don't know. That's a lot of sandwich coming at you. <laughs> um, you know, when I'm looking at this list here, some, someone that really jiggles out to me would be Reed Patrick Wigglesworth. I don't, I've never really personally met this human, but his last name is quite funny to me. Do you know anything about him? He's a freshman. And? He's from Florida. If you were to guess, what sign is he? Sagittarius, for sure. He's a thinker. I like it. Another one that jumps out here is Ryan Knupel. I think that's a bit of a mispronunciation, as it would be Ruan Knupel, <laughs> but we'll go with it. Mispronunciation on the paper. <laughs> Good enough. We'll go with it. <laughs> Ruan Knupel. <laughs> God, this guy's been making quite a splash his first few weeks here. We'll see, it, see if he lives up to the hype. We'll see what kind of slippery slope he takes. We'll see if he can do by his way to the league. Oh, oh, oh. oh. raunchy. 
That's rather risque. Standing by is one of our players hoping to be drafted early on. Thomas Hausker, how do you feel about today? Uh, I've got a few cliches lined up. I'm very excited for my family. Uh, it's a big occasion. Just want to do work, get ready to get excited and just get out there and play for the team, you know? Thomas, could you tell us about how you've prepared for this moment? This is a big day in your life, as for your family. Could you tell us about some of the feelings and or pre-game rituals you took to get ready for this moment? Obviously, I had to kick it off with a big gym sesh. Um, that started very early this morning, about 5 o'clock. Uh, came home, big breakfast, high carbs, and then... Uh, Emotions obviously flying by that time, you know, um, really, really excited. Understandable. Uh, family's pretty excited for me, for themselves as well, because it's not just me, we're all going, you they're know. watching live. Yeah, they're basically, yeah, yeah they'll, they'll be there, um, so they're coming in shortly. So, yeah, and then just the second gym sesh to kick it off and um, just really here now. Yeah, that yeah. here. Yeah. You don't want to hit the stage without being vascular. No. Flying in all the way from New Zealand for this draft, that's, that's dedication. No wonder boat, you've made it so far. Coming by boat, actually. That by is. boat. Yeah. We're going to make a strategical move here and go with a forward. I think Lawrence Rubio Bull Erasmus might be looking for a first round draft pick here, but it's up in the clouds, as they say. As they say, I personally believe the back line is what matters and win games. you got guys such as Zinzan, Elon, Robert Puddick that might put it down and win games. Good hair might finish the game, but forwards win the game. Ah, that's true, that's true. And there are occasionally forwards who have good hair. Talk about that. <laughs> Classic throwback to our captain, Sean P. With the first pick in the first round of the 2014 inter-squad scrummage, uh, draft Team Black uh, selects Kirk Pretorius. Kirk Pretorius, the muscle south of Brussels. You spoke about his forearms pre-match. Elaborate on them now. Clearly Team Black went with the deadly combination of beauty and brawn here. As you look at Kirk's tremendous forearms, they can do nothing but strike sheer terror in his future opponents. How do you feel about that? I agree. He does fancy himself to be a speed man, uh, often challenging Gavin Brown to races and losing, but he does, he does bring a lot of power. I like it. Well, we'll see how Team Red responds. With the second pick in the first round of the 2014 Inter-Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Red selects Zinzan Alan Puttick. <laughs> One look at Zinzan, all I can think of is the word performance. What would you say, Dylan? I would add the word enhancer. He is a performance enhancer. He just gets things done. <laughs> Not to get the two mixed up with one another, he is a 100% natural athlete, except I have seen him take a little bit of two scoops of whey protein. What do you got to say about that? Fish oils, man. He's all about the fish oils. <laughs> Omega-3s. We'll see if they pay off. Game time. With the, with the first pick in the second round of the 2014 Inter-Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Red selects Gavin Brown. Yeah. Team Red going with the back line. They have Zinzan passing to the speed man, Gavin Brown breaking tackles. What do you think? I think their after-squad photos are going to be great. All we're going to see is beautiful hamstrings upon beautiful quads. I don't know what more you could ask for. There's not much you can, Martin. I'm glad we agree. With the second pick in the second round of the 2014 Inter-Squad Scrummage Draft, uh, Team Black selects Lawrence Erasmus. Yeah. I do believe they mispronounced it. I believe it's Lawrence Rubio Bull Erasmus, and I believe he's going to come in like a wrecking ball. How do you feel about that, Dylan? Obviously, Team Black uh, doesn't worry about the fact that he was three minutes late to accounting today. They believe in his character, and uh, they trust him to be on point with the lineouts. I have no worries about that. <laughs> with the first pick in the third round of the 2014 Inter-Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Black selects Michael Basco. Yeah. And Team Black now has someone to direct their forwards. I presume he's going scrum half? 
He could do anything in the back line that he so pleases being from the tough streets of Overland Park. Those streets didn't didn't just become the streets. They were the streets. <laughs> With the second pick in the third round of the 2014 Inter Squad Scrummage Draft, uh, Team Red selects Mark Nemia Goro. <laughs> The first newcomer selected to the squad, a strong center with a little bit of experience at the youth level with the younger All-Americans. What do you think he could bring to the table? As being a first-year player, I think there's a lot of pressure on Mark. But in my two practices that I've observed, he seems to be wanting to bring the wood. We'll see what, what happens from there. With the first pick in the fourth round of the 2014 Inter-Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Red selects... The man is dressed to impress, and I know this is a player that you love to watch. Tell us about it. Well, if his performance is any as bit as hard as it is his last name is to pronounce, I think the other team has something to look out for. It is quite the name. <laughs> With the second pick in the fourth round of the 2014 Inter Squad Scrummage Draft, Tim Black selects Alex Goff. Yay! Yay! Alex Goff, boy grew up in Tennessee. We'll see if he can stay on the field to pertain from his always earning yellow card behavior. What do you think about that, Dylan? Yeah, the man who made such a splash his freshman year and has been in the sin bin ever since. Uh, he looks to, <laughs> looks to tame that attitude this year and progress. Also bring the flow back. With the first pick in the fifth round of the 2014 Inter-Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Black selects John O'Hallett. Yeah. <laughs> On behalf of John, the, all, the dangerous duo from Pretoria, Jono and Kirk Pretorius, seem to be outweighing the other, the opposing team with nothing but sheer forearm weight and perhaps some back power. How do you feel about that, Dylan? Team Black with a six and seven, ready to just do work and hit Team Red. We'll see how it goes. With the second pick in the fifth round of the 2014 Inter Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Red selects Austin Bush. Finally, the Warrior gets his call up. We've been waiting patiently to see when he would go, and he told me today this is the year he makes a name for himself. We'll be I'll be surprised to see his performance on the field if he could get one last okay from the misses, whoever that might be. With the first pick in the sixth round of the 2014 Inter-Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Red <laughs> selects Tom Hauserock. What team is he? What team is he? Tom Hauser gets picked up for Team Red. I hear that this man wakes up and does 5,000 push-ups just for breakfast. How do you think he's going to do on game day? Well, based off that observation, obviously push-ups are good for your calves. But I'm saying his family boated all the way here from New Zealand. This is a very proud moment for them. I'll sh I'm sure they'll go out and celebrate tonight. It was a team effort. Truly appreciated. We look forward to seeing Tom on the field. Thank you, Hauser. With the uh, second pick, in the sixth round of the 2014 Inter Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Black selects David Sneed. Yeah. <laughs> the birthday boy, he's feeling 22. Let me know how you feel about English scrum halves, Marty. Um, I believe they like tea and crumpets, and they play they play tennis, not rugby. <laughs> David Sneed, the very accomplished man. We'll see how he goes. With the first pick in the seventh round of the 2014 Inter Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Black selects Ruan Nupo. Ruan Nupo, another very well dressed gentleman here. The man had a very accomplished high school career with uh, his club, the Camels, back where he grew up. Tell me a little bit more about what you know about him on the field. Well, not very much, but I do know that his belt matches his shoes, which indicates to me that he's a snappy dresser, probably a good rugby player. With the uh, second pick in the seventh round of the 2014 Inter-Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Red selects Tanner Pope. <laughs> Team Red worried about the front row now addressing the scrum, the man from Texas. We all know Texas likes to do stuff big, as 
take a look back at Texas Smash Jake. You're only oh, as God. tough as the boots you wear. So we'll see how you can live up to that, Taylor. With the first pick in the eighth round of the 2014 Easter Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Red selects Jaime Torres. The man from Spain gets selected early. We'll see if he's able to do work in the flankers. I personally am really glad to see that he made his break from the Jonas Brothers band group, and I'm also looking forward to seeing him play. We'll see when his brothers Chandler and Neil get selected. With the second pick in the eighth round of the 2014 Inter Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Black selects Ian Crawford. <laughs> Ian Crawford looks to be as a direct descendant from a former ASU player, Nick Ronan, who might have met with another former ASU player named Cody Crawford. Do you think they have any relation together and or had relations prior to this? Well, based on his last name, we know who the man in that relationship was, but his armpits are more resembling Nick Ronan at the moment. They are sweaty, Dylan. What do you think he's going to do about it? Uh, probably go change shirts like he did at 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. today. <laughs> Look at him. He's, he's getting sweatier by the second. God, how does that first undershirt do it? How? How does it do it? <laughs> we know who the real hero is here. The 2014 Inter Squad Scrummage Draft. Team Black selects Jonathan McCall. McCall. <laughs> first pick of the ninth round, an homage to his favorite idol growing up, Tech Nine. I think he'll be very pleased with this selection. Being from John McCall's hometown, I expect nothing but a great performance and sheer outstanding hands on your part, Jonathan. I'm looking at you. <laughs> with the uh, second pick in the ninth round of the 2014 Inter Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Red selects Preston Weigel. <laughs> the. The self-proclaimed honey beaver, a.k.a. the honey badger. I don't know, he's more like a beaver to me. He's got glorious flow. We'll see if that could translate to play on the field. How do you feel about it, Dylan? Well, with the eight uh, wraps of tape that keeps it held back each game, the Weagle Beagle looks to fly down the sidelines. I think you should let that sail fly. Let it loose. Give the people what they want. I've always said just let your flag fly. Be you. <laughs> With the uh, first pick in the 10th round of the 2014 Easter Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Red selects Judah Obwehi. <laughs> One thing is for certain about Judah, he sure is tall. <laughs> I wouldn't know much about that. Well played. <laughs> With the uh, second pick in the 10th round of the 2014 Inter Squad Scrummage Draft, Tim Black selects Ricardo Latigan. <laughs> Ricardo Latigan, the boy who grew up in Bloemfontein, spending his evening hours chasing around goats barefoot, has just been picked up by Team Black and is expected to do big things. What would you? What would your? <laughs> I believe Mr. Latigan is a very strong runner, as we discussed, and a very good pick for Team Black. With the first pick uh, of the 11th round of the 2014 Inter Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Black selects Emilio Benito. <laughs> Emilio Benito, the boy who spent his early years working in a salsa factory, <laughs> is finally making his way up to the big pitch to show us his sweet feet. What do you have to say about that, Dylan? The man in the black t-shirt, tiene la camisa negra. I saw this man in Walmart yesterday throwing a can of powdered Minute Maid and spent 17 hours making his own homemade lemonade for the semester. That's dedication. He cannot be denied. <laughs> With the uh, second pick in the 11th round of the 2014 uh, scrummage draft, Team Red selects Zach Moore. <laughs> With the first pick in the 15th round of the 2014 Inter Squad Scrummage Draft, Team Black selects Michael Crockter. Michael Crockter, he's got amazing flow and great skateboard skills. That'll 
equalizing to a great day on the rugby field. Good luck to him. With the uh, <laughs> second pick in the 15th round of the 2014 Inter Squad Scrum Draft, Team Red selects Danny Breda. Yeah. Yeah. When a meatball sandwich eats a hockey puck, you get something close to Don and Nino Breda. He is a force to be reckoned with on the field and hits rucks like a honey badger. What do you have to say about it, Dylan? The man from suburban Baltimore, he's not to be messed with. He chose the streets. They didn't choose him. Let's get that clear. Let us stop real quick. Uh, the next uh, couple of rounds are going to go in threes. Uh, so we'll uh, get this done quickly. Uh, so uh, Team Red have selected the three. The next three uh, for Team Red are Nick Abreus, Blaise Walser, and Dylan Bosa. They look like the number three at the Domino's. They're a combo package and they're delicious. Hot and ready, ready to roll. <laughs>
I saw you projecting earlier today with the hashtag first overall. How do you feel about how the draft went? I feel like they were just uh, going off a strategic base uh, with all the picks and everything, so that's the reason I went fifth. What's the strategy behind that? Uh, they wanted to make sure they got some strong props up front first and then like a lock to hold it down and then like one little back backline play and then me. Okay, okay, I see if you were the coach, that would be your thought process. Do you feel like you have a lot of pressure to live up to being from the hotbed of American rugby, North Texas, specifically Plano Rugby Club? Yes, I do have a lot to live up to because uh, of yourself, obviously. A lot of Plano kids have came here and done well and I have to live up to the expectation. And uh, any predictions for the tournament this weekend, first off? The scrimmage, you mean? The scrimmage. Predictions off, based off what? How do you think it's going to go? Uh, do you have any feelings? I, I honestly feel like it'll go good. I feel like each team is pretty well balanced, and I feel like it'll have a good turnout. I'm asking for a score, man, or at least an outcome. Uh, huh. I think Red's going to take it 2014. 20 to 14, and what about for yourself for this year? I, honestly, I just can't get out there and make my, make my name known. Make your name known. Team first, though. Team first, obviously. All right. Obviously, team first. You heard it here first. Austin Bush.